Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we're going to go tonight to the book of James, chapter number 1. We're going to read verses 2 through 8, and I won't hold you very long tonight. But uh, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Dear Heavenly Father, as we search your scripture tonight, Lord, for here just for a little while, I ask God that you would challenge our hearts, Lord. Let us receive from your word, and uh, let us let that word penetrate into our hearts. We receive it in Jesus' name. Can we all say amen? Amen. I wonder tonight if there is... Anybody, as we've already said, who in the midst of the struggle that has ever gotten tired during the fight. As we live a lifestyle of faith and trust in God, we're trying to live for the Lord and we're living in our lives with God. Sometimes there becomes a real struggle and a real fight in our spirits that challenges us and and sometimes we get tired in the fight. It's easy to get tired in the fight. And so what happens is, is sometimes when you get tired in the fight, you begin to lose faith. Or maybe you begin to lose hope. Or you begin to uh, lose focus maybe of the dreams that God has put into your life. Or maybe God has called you to do something and things aren't really happening as quickly as you think that they should happen or or maybe you've got something going on in your body physically and you need a healing and you just, you, you have faith and you believe that God can heal you, but it just seems like that the healing is not taking place. Or, or maybe you, you have a family member that you've been praying for and you've been asking God to deliver and set free and it, and it seems like it just isn't happening. And, and so you have faith in God, but through the process of faith, Sometimes the, the process becomes so overwhelming that if we aren't careful, we will lose our hope of faith and we'll give up or we'll give up just short of when God wants to move into our situation. Or maybe we lose hope of a better life or a better dream. It seems as though we fall into despair and when the enemy gets us into despair, it's then that he pounces on us to destroy our faith. That's what the enemy does. He comes, the Bible said, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He wants to destroy our faith. He wants to destroy our joy, our peace in God. He wants to destroy everything that God has done good in our lives. And that's the work of the enemy, is to destroy our walk with God. Because the enemy knows that when we get into despairing situations or our lives become discouraged, the moment that we become discouraged is the very moment that we become ineffective in our relationship with God. Now, I'm not saying there aren't times that it's easily to become discouraged. There are many times that we have discouragement that comes into our lives. But the very moment that that discouragement takes hold of us is the very moment that we become ineffective in our relationship with God. And so the enemy wants to pounce us and to destroy our faith because when our faith is gone, then we are left without hope. And when there is no hope, then that's when despair sets in in our lives. It's said that you can live uh, 40 days without food or you can live three days without water. And, and uh, chances are that you could live a little longer than those periods, but... You know, that's what it's 
claims that 40 days without food or three days without water and your body will, will begin to decay or begin to die. But you know something? You cannot live one second without hope. And our hope is found in Christ. Our hope is found in the Lord. Our hope is not found in the world. Because if we are looking for hope in this world, the Bible said that we are of all men most miserable. Our hope has to be founded in Jesus Christ. And so the enemy wants to bring despair. He wants to bring discouragement. He wants to bring depression into our lives because that's his work. We look at a man named David. David was a man who struggled just as some of you may be struggling today or some of us that are here tonight. We struggle in our walk with God at times. We struggle in our faith. We struggle sometimes and really we know that God can, but do we really believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that He will? We know that He can heal, but do we really believe that He's going to heal? We come and we bring prayer requests and we ask God to move upon situations and we believe that God can and we believe that God can deliver, but do we really believe with the fullest intent of our heart, do we really have the faith that believes that he really will do it? I want us to listen to what David said in Psalms chapter 73. Beginning in verse number 1, he said, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now, that's where I want to draw our attention to there in verse number 3. He said, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And then in verse 16, he said, When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God and then understood I their end. Have you ever looked at people in the world and you thought, how are they so blessed? I mean, they don't go to church, they don't live for God, they don't pay their tithing, they don't do the things that the Bible said that we need to do in order to be blessed, but you look at them and they're living in nice homes and they're driving nice automobiles and, and they're doing all these things that look like they're very blessed, and you see them prospering. You see prosperous people among the wicked. I don't know about you, but I've thought about that before, and I've thought, you know, how are they so blessed? And when they don't serve God, they don't live for God, they may not be terrible people, and maybe some of them may be bad people. I don't know, but they still look like on the outside that they are blessed of God. And like many of us, David got sidetracked by looking at the world. His faith wavered when he began looking at how the ungodly people were prospering. You see, we've got to understand that money is not the answer to all things. Money is not the answer to everything in life. It's good to have money. And I've heard it said that money creates happiness. Money alone does not create happiness. Why in Hollywood do we see people all the time that, that are blessed financially, that have a lot of money, mansions, and they're, and they're taking their own lives? It's because money does not create happiness. Now, it's nice to have some money and be able to pay your bills and be able to do the things that you need to do, but money alone is not the answer to all things because that has been proven to not be true by many people that have taken their lives that have been in well-off situations. Having a huge home on the lake does not mean that one has a satisfied soul. I can own a beautiful home out here on Rough River, but you know something? That's not going to bring happiness to my life if I'm miserable in my soul. If I don't have good things going on on the inside, those outside things are not going to bring happiness into my life. They might for a season. They might for a season of time. They may, they may make me feel good for a little while. But you know something? Those things are going to come and go. 
And I've got to constantly be having more and more material things because I can never become half happy because material things alone are not the answer to all things in life. Just because they're driving the nicest car does not mean that they enjoy the hope that we might have on the inside of us today. Living in a nice home, there's nothing wrong with those things. But you know something? Those things are not what brings happiness to life. And so it took David a moment, but after he found himself in the house of God, he realized how rich he really was. Maybe he looked and he saw his children worshiping God. You know something? That's much more of a blessing than being able to drive home in a new automobile is when you see your children in the house of God worshiping the Lord. That's what a real blessing is. Or maybe, uh, maybe you, you see your wife or your husband praying or maybe you see a body in your family that was healed or delivered by God or, or maybe God touched his tormented mind and, and maybe he was going through things in his life and, and maybe he come under the anointing of the Holy Ghost when he would begin to worship God. You know something? Those are the real blessings in Christ. Those are the real blessings in God. Those are the real things that create a genuine form of hope into your life. In any case, he stopped envying the prosperity of the wicked when he realized just how blessed he really was. So you know something? We've just got to keep on believing. We've got to keep on receiving. And when your eyes tell you that your problem is too big, you've got to let your spirit man tell your eyes just how big your God really is. You see, God is bigger than every circumstance and every situation that we go through. Some of the things that we go through in life are bigger than who we are. They're bigger than us. They're, they're bigger than who we are. You see, we've got to have faith and trust in God because when we go through things and circumstances that are bigger than us, we've got to have a spirit man on the inside of us that rises up on the inside of us. It's called the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And He rises up on the inside of us and He causes us to be able to face the challenges of the world in which we go through. We've got to get our eyes on what God is doing in our lives and in the lives of everybody else around us. In 1 Peter chapter 3, in verses 11, and 13, 11 through 13, it says, Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if he be followers of that which is good? And then in Matthew 21, verse 42, it said, Jesus saith unto them, Did you ever read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is, the mar it is marvelous in our eyes. And then in Malachi 1, in verse 5, it says, And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. See, some of us here today, we allow circumstances to define our God instead of allowing God to define our circumstances. We can't allow our circumstances to define God. We've got to allow God to define our circumstances. You see, every day as a child of God, we've got to make the decision that I'm going to serve God regardless of my circumstance. So many people are contingent upon their circumstances. If, if everything's going good, I'll serve God. Or maybe some people, when they get down in bad times, then they'll serve God. But when everything's going good, they forget about God. We cannot be contingent based upon our circumstances. We've got to save, serve God through every circumstance and through everything that we go through in life. Our circumstances cannot control whether we're happy, whether we're holy, whether we're in right relationship and standing with God. Our God has to define our circumstance. Some folks spend more time talking about their problems than they do about the God who can change their problems. 
You see, our God can change our problems tonight. Every problem that we are going through, everything that we are facing. Sometimes God allows those problems in our lives because it's character building. It's, it's, it's time that God can build us and create us and, and mold us into what He wants us to become. You see, if I never went through a problem or if I never went through a valley, then I would need faith and I would need trust in God. And so we need to stop bragging about our problems and start bragging about our God because our God is a healer. Our God is a miracle worker. Our God is a way changer. He can raise dead things in our lives and He can bring them back to life again. He can take people that all hope has been given up on. Nobody thinks that they'll ever amount to anything, that they'll ever turn their lives to God. God can take a heart. You see, the Bible said that God changed the hearts of kings. And if God can change the hearts of kings... He can change the hearts of anybody. Just because you're down and out doesn't mean that our God is. God doesn't get down and out. The Bible said He is the same yesterday, today, and forever in Hebrews 11 verse 8. He doesn't change. He stays the same. He is always the same. The same God that over uh, 4,000 years ago stepped out and said let there be light and light had to travel to 186,000 miles per second is the same God that we serve today he's a way maker with just a touch of his hand every problem that you are dealing with can be changed in a moment of time how many know what I'm talking about tonight if he's ever healed you you know what I'm talking about. If He's ever delivered you, you know what I'm talking about. If He has ever blessed you, you know what I'm talking about. If He's ever saved your children, you know what I'm talking about. Your circumstance will almost always be more than you can handle by yourself. But when you stop magnifying the circumstance and start magnifying the God of the circumstance, you will find that there is nothing that is too hard or too big for our God. You see, if God can step out and create a universe and make life out of nothing and step out and say, let there be light when there had never been light and there had never been anything ever living upon the earth, if God can step out in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 and say, let it be, and at the heat of His voice and the command of His words, it had to happen, don't you think that He can take care of our needs tonight? The Bible said that He feeds the birds of the air. Why do we worry about how we're going to get clothed and how we're going to get fed and, and how we're going to do all those things? David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. We are seed of God. We are blessed of God tonight. If God can step out into the world and all that was in the world, humanity, take a barren woman of 90 years old and open her womb to bear a, man or a son named Isaac, then I'm going to tell you, God can do anything. If God can... Take a barren woman, 90 years of age, open up her womb and let her bear a son that would later be called Isaac. God can do anything. God took a harlot and saved a nation. Don't you imagine that, that harlot of that day? Don't, don't you think that she was the gossip of the community, the gossip of the town, that everybody thought she'd never amount to anything, never be anything, but yet God took her and he saved an entire nation through her. David was a little shepherd boy. And he was only 16 years old. And, and he goes out and he kills a giant. Nine foot tall giant. And little David standing out there with, with just a, a stone and a sling. And he rises up against this giant. And the power of God fell upon his life. And a little shepherd boy steps out. And he kills a giant. 
Don't you imagine that the God that took a virgin and opened her womb to conceive a Messiah and, and opened blinded eyes and unstopped deaf ears and healed leprosy and, and caused the lame to walk and, and resurrected his own dead body and, and went to a man of, that, by the name of Lazarus that had been laying there for four days, his body already decaying? And he said, come hither, and life was given back to him. I'm going to tell you, if God can resurrect the dead physically, then God can also resurrect the dead spiritually. He is capable tonight. If He can do those things, I know that He can take care of our circumstances because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, some churches and denominations believe that that the last miracle ended when Jesus uh, went to the cross or when, when, when he, before the resurrection, they, they think that, that those, those things are ended, that they're to happen no more. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that I serve a God tonight that is able to heal, that is able to deliver, and is able to set free, and is able to move with the Holy Ghost and His power through the Holy Spirit. Just keep believing when your ears tell the lies of the enemy and, and you've got to let your spirit man tell your ears the truth that God has spoken. You see, when God speaks something into your spirit, when you walk away, the enemy will begin to tell you it wasn't real, it wasn't true, you didn't really get healed, you didn't really receive this and you didn't really receive that or, or whatever God has placed into your life. And so the enemy wants to destroy the good thing that God has just done in your life. You've got to speak to those ears. You've got to speak the truth of the Word of God and the words that God has spoken. And you've got to listen to your heart and listen to what the Spirit of God is saying into your life. The Bible said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Stop listening to everything that the devil is saying to you and, and everything of why things won't work and why things won't happen and why things can't succeed. Listen to the voice of God. No, they won't happen by the natural. No, by appearance they won't happen. By putting it down on paper, it looks like that it cannot happen. But you know something with God, if God has called you to do it, then step out and let it happen, and God will see you through. In Revelations 12 and verse 9 it said, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. You see, we've got to understand something tonight. The devil's only power over you is when you allow him to deceive you into thinking that God doesn't care about you. The Bible said that the devil is the father of all lies. He is the father of everything that is false. Quit listening to the voices of the enemy and start listening to the voice of what God is saying to do. In Romans chapter 10, I know I'm sharing a lot of scripture with you, but in verses 10... Uh, 13 through 17 it says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and what shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they, that, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? And so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing cometh by the word of God. Our faith cometh by hearing the word of God. We want more faith in our lives. We've got to get into His Word and put it into our heart. For when we hear God's Word and we begin to let it penetrate into our hearts and into our spirit, that's how we develop faith. That's how we develop trust. Not in the newspaper, not in the magazine, not in the Wall Street Journal, not in the Litchfield Gazette. 
That's not where we build faith. In fact, those sources will oftentimes kill your faith. Those are killjoys to your faith. Because there's so many negative reports and so many negative things happening in our world. And you watch the 11 o'clock news and there's always nine negative reports for every good one positive report. Those are killjoys of our faith. We need to get into God's Word and let God's Word penetrate into our hearts. We've got to get our nose into the book of God. We've got to position ourselves to hear the Word of God. You see, that's why we don't see many people on Wednesday night is because the majority of people today, I I believe that we live in a society today that does not have a biblical worldview. We don't have people in our world today that really wants to delve into God's Word and really become deeper in love with the Word of God. We've got to fall in love with God's Word. We've got to know God's Word. We've got to live by God's Word. In Luke chapter 9, in verses 38 through 44, it said, And behold, a man of company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him that, or it teareth him that he foameth again, and bruising him, Uh, hardly departeth from him, in verse 40, and I besought the disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered every one all, at all these things which Jesus, which Jesus did, He said unto his, his disciples, Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. You see, Jesus had left them with the same power to heal and to do the same things that He had done, but yet their faith was not strong enough to bring healing to this little child. But Jesus came into the picture. You see, we've got to open our ears, let God begin to speak faith into our hearts, find a place to pray, and listen to the voice of God. You know, in our world, in our church today, we don't have enough prayer. We don't have enough prayer today. Used to, we had prayer warriors, people that knew how to pray and knew how to seek the face of God. You know something? If we have a prayer service today, we're we're just a short amount of time, and uh, our prayers don't continue. We need to seek God's face. We need to seek Him in 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 traversing or in in prayer, a prayer that changes things, a prayers that touches heaven. You see, just we've got to keep on believing. And when your feet tell you to run, you've got to let your spirit man tell your feet about the giant slayer who lives on the inside of you. You've got to tell him. You've got to say, enemy, I serve a God who is a giant slayer. This giant has come against me as I preached a couple Sundays ago about uh, Caleb and Joshua when when they were going into the promised land and... and, uh, Ten brought back the report, the negative report, and they said, yes, there's wonderful things over in the promised land. There's big grapes. There's there's pomegranate trees. There's wonderful things over there. But they said, the only problem is this, and that is that there are giants in the land. You know something? We've got to learn how to overcome those giants. We've got to learn how to face those giants. Many of those giants are spiritual giants. The Bible said that we are not in warfare against physical combat and physical hydrogen warfare, but that we are in battle against rulers of spiritual wickedness. We are in battle against rulers of darkness. And we've got to take up the armor of God, the full armor of God, and we've got to learn how to go to battle against the giants that come into our lives. 
In Psalms chapter 4 it said, But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear him when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to put our trust in the Lord tonight. He's going to see us through. He's going to take us through. He's going to deliver us. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 17 said, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes all we can do is stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. Galatians 5 verse 1 said, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And then in Ephesians chapter 6, in verses 13 and 15, it says, Wherefore take on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see, sometimes all we can do is just stand. We've prayed and we've sought God and we have faith and we believe and nothing is happening. All we can do is just stand. We have a child that has gone wayward and is living in a lifestyle that is not of God. We claim faith. We claim deliverance over them. We claim that they're going to be set free, but we don't see anything happening All we can do is just stand. The Bible said stand when you do not know what to do, when you've done everything that you know to do, just stand upon the Word of God that you know beyond the shadow of a doubt is truth in His Word. Stand in your faith. Set yourself to see the salvation of the Lord. Stop all the running from one situation to the next. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord today. God wants to heal your problem. He wants to touch your life. And He wants to change your situation. And so there is no reason to run when you're stepping into peace. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We've got to keep believing. When your head tells you to bargain, let your spirit man tell your head about the finished work of Jesus Christ that has already settled every problem that you're going to face in your life. In James 1 verses 6 and 8 it says, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. In 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 18, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You see, if your enemy can get you to think in the natural, we've got to understand that we are not serving a God that is bound by the laws of nature. He's the one that created it. He is a supernatural God. And when we step into divine healings and we step into the miraculous, we are no longer bound by laws of nature. We have stepped into the supernatural. That's why science cannot explain when cancers have been healed. When you go to the doctor and the doctor says there's cancer in the body and then maybe you come to church and you receive a healing in your body and all of a sudden the cancer has has gone completely out of the body and they go back and God has done what science says cannot happen. In a moment time, in a second of time, a healing has come into the body And the natural is no longer taking effect in the body because a supernatural power of God has just occurred. 
You see, the enemy wants you to be bound by the laws of nature. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, and I'm just going to close here in just a moment, it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Philippians 4 and 7, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ. We've got to keep believing. When your heart tells you to quit and give up and, and to just keep to quit pressing through and to uh, keep, just give up and quit you've got to let your spirit man tell your heart that you are not quitting because it's already over because God has already completed everything that I ever need to do in Proverbs 23 and verse 7 it says for as a man thinketh in his heart so is he eat and drink saith he to thee but his heart is not with he as a man thinketh in his heart that's what he is. Whatever it is that you think tonight about yourself, that's what you are. If you don't see yourself as being victorious, then you're going to be defeated. You've got to rise up and you've got to say, I am not the tail, but I am the head. I am not defeated, but I, have, I serve the one who has already defeated everything that I would ever live for. When it looks like there is no victory for your life, you've got to look the adversary right square in the eye and you've got to say that I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loves me because He has already provided for my healing. He has already provided for everything that I would ever need in my life. In Psalm 73 and 26 it says, My flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. John 14 and 27, it says, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then in John chapter 3 and verse 20, it says, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. You see, we've got to keep on believing. We've got to keep on knowing. And I've got a lot more scriptures and a lot more verses, but I'm going to close tonight. I'm going to close with this one verse. In Colossians 4, verse 6, it says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. You see, sometimes doubt tries to come into our lives. Our doubt tries to come into our spirit and tries to destroy our faith. But we've got to rise up and we've got to say, doubt, get out of my way. And we've got to understand that the King of glory is concerned about us tonight. He knows our every situation and He knows our every need. Dear Heavenly Father, we just love You tonight. Lord, we thank You for Your Spirit. We thank You for the power of Your Word. We thank You, God, for the power of the cross. We thank You, God, for the power of Your Spirit, Your Holy Ghost, Your Holy Spirit that liveth on the inside of us tonight. I pray, God, that, that we would just keep on believing and we would keep on understanding, God, that Your Word is true. And, God, that I can build a lifestyle of faith from the Word that You have given us. God, let us receive this Word tonight into our spirit and into our lives. God, again, we pray for Pat tonight. I pray Your blessings to be upon her. I ask, God, that You would strengthen her. And, God, that You would just uh, comfort her tonight. Let her know, God, that You are holding her in the palm of Your hand right now. And, God, that You are with her. You said You'd never leave us, You'd never forsake us but you would go with us even to the end of the world, to the ends of the earth. God, we love you tonight. We honor you. We praise you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight.